Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll be discussing more about bioreactor design and operational parameters under biochemical and bioprocess engineering. So let's get started with this. So this was the point we left in the previous video. So we talked about the bubble column reactor and all of its pros and cons. We talked about bubble collisions. We talked about multi-stage columns with perforated plates for solving the problem of bubble collisions and all of that. So if you haven't watched the previous video, please check out my previous video so that you may get the reference of all of it. So moving on with today's like, so we'll talk about airlift reactor systems. So talking about airlift reactor systems, so it's a bit different from the mechanical and the bubble one. So in this airlift reactor, so there are airlift reactors which can handle more viscous fluids. So that was not the case with the bubble reactor system. So the bubble reactor system could only hand, handle low uh, visc uh, low viscous or low uh, fl uh, fluids with uh, low viscosity and whereas the LF reactors can handle fluids with higher viscosity so it and also it has uh, a solution for collisions so it does not pro uh, produce any sort of collisions also agitated fermenter works at around 15,000 meter cube uh, ever built by ICI is an airlift designed for the production of single cell protein. So this is an important point that you need to remember. So it's uh, important for the production of single cell protein, the airlift reactor system. Also, it's a very large fermenter. The use of non-mechanically agitated, agitated design is preferred. So that uh, cause the use of a non-mechanically agitated design is preferred because uh, it saves a lot of cost and uh, definitely it's preferable over the other two. And last, uh, the second last point that we have in this is the high oxygen transfer rates and better cooling can be attained. So the high oxygen transfer rates means better efficiency. So definitely it will be preferred over the two and mechanical stirring to a loop reactor increases flexibility. So definitely there are some advantages over the two. That's why we are talking about the airlift reactor at the last over the, uh, before we talked about the mechanical and the bubble. So moving on. So we have some of the pictures for you. So it's the use of non agitated fermentation. So this is this can be these pictures can is feasible or can be obtained from both bubble or the uh, airlift system. So these are some of the uh, some of we can see the bio fermentation or some of the food processes from the airlift as well as bubble bioreactors. So we get some of it like food fermentation, beer and wine fermentation, cheese fermentation. So these are some of the important pictures that I got for you regarding this fermentation. So moving on with. So we have this some of the technical stuff here. So let's just start with the aeration. So aeration uh, that is involved in fermentation. So there are some of the technicalities that we go that we need to go through while talking about aeration. So this aeration is an important topic when we talk about fermenters and especially about non-agitated ones. So the oxygen requirements depends on the choice of organisms. All right. So OURs or the oxy oxygen utilization rate is equals to the X dot QO2. So X is uh, any sort of cell concentration and QO2 is the specific uptake of oxygen, which can be written as KLA in bracket C asterisk minus CL. So KLA as we know volumetric mass transfer coefficient and C dash is the saturated uh, oxygen concentration and CL is the total oxygen concentration. All right. And also it is a large scale system. QO2 requirement 2 is uh, 40 to 200 millimolar oxygen per liter per hour. So usually most systems require in the range of 40 to 60 millimoles. Uh, so this was of the aeration. So just remember the formula for aeration, uh, which is basically the uh, OUR or oxy oxy yeah. uh, oxidation utilization oxygen utilization rate, uh, which equals to the KLA in brackets C asterisk minus CL. So aeration is given by this. Just remember things which are just important for your uh, studies. Moving on with this. So this is something that I got for you. So this is a table five uh, where I got from the book of Schuler and Karg. So this is the table that I got, uh, which is the organism list. And this is the QO2 or the uptake rate. All right. 
These are some of the E. coli, Azobacter, Streptomyces yeast, Saccharomyces mold, Penicillium, Aspergillus niger, plant cells, and more. Lots of many we have it. And QO2 or the oxidation utilization rate as we have 10 to 12. And all in millimolar. So this is the addition uh, table that I got for you for a better understanding as we have, you can see. Uh, Azobacter is, is its highest and next we have the E. coli and other are pretty much average. Azobacter is like extremely high whereas next we have the E. coli. So moving on we have uh, this aeration again. This is the border form of this. So in this we're going to study that from supply side the critical parameter is KLA which is the volumetric mass transfer coefficient. So we talked about that OUR equals to KLA in brackets or C asterisk minus CL right. So in that KLA is equals to this. So we'll just uh, elaborate the aeration part in this. Now, so talking about the aeration part, we just talked about the simple formula which says um, OUR equals to XQO2, which equals to KLA in bracket C asterisk minus CL that we just right now studied. So in this part, we have, so in this part, we have KLA. So the elaborate definition of KLA stands is K in brackets PG by VR to the power of 0.4 into VS to the power of 0.5 into N to the power of 0.5. So we have all of these, what are these K, PG, VR, VS and N. So in this K is the empirical constant. So this is a constant that remains the same. And this the PG is the power requirement in an aerated gas bioreactor. So that is an important part. So power will be given. So definitely a good amount of power is needed for uh, functioning of a bioreactor. And VR is the uh, bioreactor volume. And VS is the superficial gas exit speed. So this is the speed or the gas gas exit speed. And N is the rotational speed of an agitator. So N is the uh, speed of the agitator. So here is the elaborate definition of KLA in the formula of KLA into C dash minus CL. So in this KLA is this. So this KLA is this as you can see and uh, this are ex expressed in this. So this is not pretty much that important and also we have the units here this which is important. So uh, this is expressed in RPM and rotational speed is expressed in RPM where the gas speed is expressed in centimeter per meter whereas VR or the bioreactor volume is uh, in HP. I mean the power is uh, uh, the power of the bioreactor is expressed in HP or horsepower whereas the volume is expressed in liters. All right. So moving on with this. So we have a better formula of this. So here we have is uh, PG can be estimated from other correlations. So from the which from the previous formula we have all got a term which is PG which was present in KLA, right? So KLA equals to PG by VG that we got. So PG is the power, that, right? So this is the power that a bioreactor requires for operating. So in this PG can be defined elaborately as, so it's so it's just increasing. So it's that's not, so it's that not simple. It's that not that simple. So it's pretty much complicated as you can see. So it's just not that OUR equals to KLA in bracket C dash minus KLA. So from that we got to know that KLA has its own functionalities and it's a huge term. And from KLA we got to know about the power. So the power in itself is a huge thing. So as we see power equals to K in brackets P square under under we have the U mu or P mu to the uh, P mu square. Uh, into n into d i cube by q to the power of 0 0.56 whole to the power of 0 0.45 so k is the constant which is which remains the same as the previous term for kla and pu here is the power required in the ungassed fermenter all right so in this pu uh, here under power we have another power inside it as well so this is the power required in the ungassed fermenter. So and also DI is the impeller diameter. Uh, so we DI is the impeller diameter and Q that we have here. So N remains the same, which is the speed and Q is the aeration rate. So here Q is the aeration rate or the volume of gas supplied per minute divided by liquid volume in the reactor. 
So this was about the PG or the power required by the bioreactor. So moving on to this, so let us talk about the KLA determination. So there are number of ways to which we can talk about KLA. So we have almost finished the part of aeration. So we have finally got, uh, got through aeration. So talking about the KLA determination. So the KLA determination is very important and it has number of ways through which we can determine the KLA. So it, uh, it's through unsteady, steady, dynamic and sulfide test. All right. So talking through, so the actor should be filled with pure water or medium in which she, uh, she uh, C asterisk or the saturated volume can be accurately measured and oxygen is removed from the system by sparging with nitrogen. So this was the, uh, this was probably the state or the, uh, this is the unsteady state. I guess this is the steady state we are talking about. So I'll be explaining about more of it. So, so basically, so basically in this, what happens is as you can see, so basically we just remove the oxygen by sparging it with nitrogen. So nitrogen plays a huge role here. So with sparging in with nitrogen, it just removes the oxygenate and basically it remains a water without oxygen. In the unsteady state that we have is the air is then introduced and change is a change in dissolved oxygen is monitored until the solution is nearly saturated. All right. So basically, uh, this is the control that we need to follow. So pardon for the direct state. So this is not the steady state as you can see now. So this is what it is. So basically our, our reactor is filled with pure water. Uh, in which uh, C dash uh, C asterisk can be uh, in which uh, C asterisk can be measured, right? So in that, what happens that we remove oxygen first by putting in nitrogen. All right. So by putting in nitrogen, all the oxygen gets removed or absorbed or what? Or gets saturated. So basically, in unsteady state, how what happens is after this stage is reached or after the oxygen has been removed, again air is uh, put in or sparged in or air is introduced and the change is uh, change in dissolved oxygen is monitored so the difference is monitored uh, with the dissolved oxygen until the uh, solution is nearly saturated or the c dash is nearly the equal just before uh, just before the normal situation so this is what the unsteady say, uh, state method says about all right so this is pretty simple as we can see so we just need to put in air again and just check the amount or the difference of dissolved oxygen until the solution is reached to normal. All right. So the difference is uh, is monitored so that the uh, saturation is received uh, received. So as you can see the we have the derivation here as well. So DCL by DT equals to KLA. This is the uh, this is the basic formula, right? that we just studied about aeration, right? OUR equals to KLA in bracket C dash minus CL. So this is the thing. This is the differentiation all through we go through. And this is the formula we get at last. So this is not at all important. This is just for uh, your understanding uh, that is shown here. So this is this is this was the unsteady state. So moving on. So we talk about the another common approach, which is the sulfide method. So in the presence of uh, copper, the sulfite, sulfur in sulfite is oxidized to sulfate. So SO3 gets oxidized to SO4, all right, in a zero order reaction. So this reaction is very rapid and consequently Cl approaches zero. And the rate of sulfate formation is monitored and proportional to the rate of oxygen consumption. So this is pretty much simple. So in the presence of Cl copper, the sulfur in the sulfite gets oxidized to sulfate in a zero order reaction and the reaction is very rapid and this thing gets approached to zero, this thing moves to zero. And in this between, when the conversion takes place, so the rate of sulfate formation, the when the conversion is taking place and the rate of this thing, the rate of sulfate formation is checked and which is very, very much proportional or which is directly proportional to the rate of oxygen consumption. All right, so this was the, well, this is the method another way determine KLA through the sulfide method. So we have here have another example for you, which is the example of half mole of O2 is consumed to produce one mole of SO2. So half mole of uh, this thing oxygen is consumed to produce one mole of sulfate here, as you can see. So where this thing, uh, the CL or the this thing CL or the uh, consumption of 
or the formation of actual the actual production of sulfate is the concentration of so2 so the oxygen solubility or c dash or the saturation saturated solubility is a constant depending on the medium composition temperature pressure and can be measured separately so this is another derivation for the sulfide so this is not important but just you can just have a look to it even with this so which is that coming to the last part of this video which is the sulfide method probably overestimates kla as the chemical reactor can take place near the liquid form all right so best way to determine kla is the steady state method so talking about now the steady state method so we now come to the steady state method so in which the whole reactor is used as a respirometer so this is an important thing so the whole reactor is used now as a respirometer all right so large fermenter and gas gas is passed under significant pressure so this all of the reaction takes place in a large huge fermenters and gas is passed under uh, seemingly a good good amount of pressure and in this the c dash c asterisk of the saturated uh, volume is proportional to po2 or the oxygen dependency which depends on the total pressure as as well as the fraction of the gas that is oxygen all right so the best way is the steady state method basically what happens in the steady state is that one method for obtaining the our or the aeration rate or the oxy oxygen utilization rate is to use a real culture and base it on the difference between the air concentration in the inlet air and that in the exit and on the air flow rate so provided the fall of oxygen concentration is sufficient uh, this approach also enables to uh, basically to determine the kla with time and agitation control so basically the fall of oxygen which is proportional to the kla so as you can as it's pretty much simple that uh, the basic difference between the air concentration in the inlet air and that in the exit and on the air flow so basically the fall of oxygen determines the kla which is directly proportional to the time and agitated conduction uh, conditions during the fermentation and dynamic method shares similarities with the steady state method in that it uses a fermenter with active cells so dynamic method requires requires that the supply of air be shut off for a short period and then be turned back on so this is simple as that so basically it uses uh, a fermenter with active cells and the air supply air supply is uh, temporarily shut off for a or it temporarily closed for a short period and then is then it is back turned on so let's just keep this video till here hope you enjoyed the video so please type your doubts on all of the problems in the comment i'll definitely uh, handle all of your doubts and answer you all so thank you for watching this video stay tuned for more